Hi, welcome to the APIC CIC Study Guide Series 6 on environmental care, cleaning, sterilization, disinfection, and asepsis. Um, I am Christy Brownfield from the APIC Kern Rivers chapter, and I'm going to take you through this module. Environment of Care, or EOC. Part of this is construction. Um, the ICRA, or the Infection Control Risk Assessment, um, when the facility is undergoing major renovations, the ICRA should be done by a multidisciplinary team and is completed to minimize infectious hazards to the patients and the healthcare providers. IPs must participate at all levels of construction project and in all phases. Construction and renovation policies should include phasing and commissioning of projects and authority for determining unit closures. Projects may have negative airflow within the construction zone. A building design feature to be listed on the ICRA should include the number of AIIRs and their location within the facility. During construction and renovation, you must monitor for Legionella and Aspergillus. Safety. Temperature requirements for water from the CDC to prevent Legionella is 124 degrees Celsius and above for hot water and cold water at 68 degrees Celsius. If there's a suspicion of a case of healthcare associated Legionella, the facility water should be tested to determine if the organism is present. When greater than 30% of the hospital's water tanks and distal sites are positive for Legionella, then disinfection of the water system should occur. Water fountains in a facility must be designed to prevent stagnation and aerosolizing of water and must have routine maintenance. In the event of cryptosporidium, a protozoa in the facility water, use high temperature to eliminate the organism. AIRR requirements or airborne infection isolation room requirements are that you must have a visible way to monitor pressure if it's a newly constructed room, must have air exhausted to the outside if it is a permanent dedicated negative airflow room, you must have 12 air exchanges per hour, the use of dual purpose rooms that can alternate between negative and positive pressure should be avoided as their use is not supported by, by the FGI or Facility Guideline Institute recommendations. May be used for bronchoscopy in a patient with suspected or confirmed TB. Sink should be deep, deep enough in the patient care areas to prevent splashing of nearby items. Aerators should not be used as they increase the risk of healthcare associated infections. Inpatient units that house hematopoietic stem cell transplant patients should prohibit live plants and dried flowers and avoid items that collect or trap dust. The Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning System or HVAC system. A shutdown in the HVAC system must be coordinated with the IP and may include moving immune compromised patients and those in airborne precautions. Appropriate air exchange rates must be maintained before rooms are to be put into use. Air filtration by diffusion filtration is the effective method. Monitor the following for a HVAC system malfunction. An increase in the number of SSIs, aspergillus in any patient, an increase in varicella infections, and not an increase in device-associated infections. Air requirements in an OR. MERV or minimum efficiency reporting values, which are air filtration requirements based on the size of the particle the filter can remove. The minimum standard for an OR is 90%, which is a MERV of 14. Laminar airflow is not appropriate as it may cause hypothermia for the patient. What is needed is non-inductional unidirectional infusion airflow. Airflow must go th from an area that is clean to an area that is less clean. Thus, in an OR, air must go from the ceiling near the center of the room 
and the air exhaust should be near the floor of the periphery of the room. Cleaning. Selections of disinfectants or cleaning products should include ease of use, efficacy, acceptability, safety, and cost. Physical removal, removal of debris must occur before disinfection can occur. Evaluation of cleaning. To evaluate the efficacy of cleaning, the use of RODAC plates is the most reliable method. Routine environmental culturing should not be performed except during an epidemiological investigation. The FDA approves antiseptics along with medications. Bleach dil dilution to clean up blood on a non-porous surface is a 1 to 100 ratio and is the best choice for cleaning blood and bodily fluids. Diluted bleach may be stored in an open container for up to 24 hours. All cleaning solutions must be labeled with the chemical content, name, and expiration date. The practice of topping off cleaning products from a larger bottle is prohibited as this practice may lead to cross-contamination. In controlling a C. diff infection during an outbreak, the first step is to make sure the EBS staff are using bleach during terminal cleaning. Environmentally friendly cleaning approaches include the use of detergent on floors in the patient room, provided the patient is not on special precautions. Hydrogen peroxide vapor provides effective disinfection of all surfaces and supplies in the room. However, the room must be clean prior to use and the room must be unoccupied. When selecting a cleaning agent for use on patient care equipment, it is most important to choose a product based on the manufacturer's guidelines for cleaning. May be, de may be contaminated with pseudomonas. Cleaning linens. Hot water temperature for linen should be set at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Clean and dirty linens can only be transported together if there is clear separation from each other. EVS staff must be trained on when to wear PPE, the limitations of each type of PPE, and maintenance of PPE. Between cases, cleaning of the OR floor is to include a three to four foot parameter around the table unless a wider area of contamination is noted. Cleaning the patient environment. Use of a secret shopper may be useful in data collection to determine the cleaning practices of high touch surface areas. The practice most likely to result in improved infection prevention is the cleaning and disinfection of all surfaces in a room that have potentially come into contact with hands, including but not limited to high touch surfaces. Cleaning should be done from an area that is clean to an area that is dirty, such as a top to bottom or from the perimeter of the room to the patient zone. During an outbreak, high touch surfaces may need to be cleaned three times per day. Prevention of spore aerosolization can occur by using a chemically treated cloth or a microfiber cloth. Standard mop heads should be laundered daily. SPD or the sterile processing department. Use of a centralized department is best for efficacy of medical instrument cleaning. Steam sterilization and ethylene oxide gas kill bacterial spores. Flash sterilization is also known as immediate use steam sterilization or IUSS. When evaluating a third party reprocessor, evaluate the cleaning and decanap contamination process and sterilizing load preparation process. When soaking instruments, temperature of the solutions and the time the instruments soaked must be documented. When transporting instruments to the sterile processing department, they must be transported in a puncture-proof sealable container labeled biohazard. Critical items must achieve a sterility assurance level of 10 to the 6th power. Single-use devices can be reprocessed in a third-party facility 
if the FDI guidelines are followed. Bronchoscopes are often contaminated with MTB or pseudomonas. Ethylene oxide is affected by the gas concentration, temperature, relative humidity, and exposure time. The advantages of OPA over glutaraldehyde are OPA does not require activation. OPA is stable, stable over a range of pH levels. OPA does not irritate the eyes or nose. Improved hydrogen peroxide contains anionic and or non-ionic surfactants, which have a rapid action and low toxicity. At the point of use, instruments should be cleaned before biofilm can form and kept moist, and contaminated devices are to be placed in a sealed container to prevent exposure to staff and patients. Biofilms prevent antibiotics and disinfectants from reaching pathogens. Critical medical and surgical devices and instruments that enter normally sterile tissue or the vascular system or through which a sterile body fluid flows must be disinfected and sterilized at a, as a Category 1A recommendation from the CDC. Toxic anterior segment syndrome, or TASS, may be associated with non-infectious endophthalmitis and can result from inadequate sterilization of surgical instruments following cataract surgery and may be due to improper handling, cleaning, and rinsing of the instruments and gloves and powder. Endotracheal and endovaginal ultrasound probes are semi-critical devices and require high-level disinfection, even if probe covers are used. Liquid sterilization includes the use of glutaraldehyde, hydrogen peroxide, a parasitic acid to sterilize in items that are critical and heat sensitive. Items cannot be wrapped so sterility is not maintained in the rinsing, drying, and storage phases. Thus, it is used only on items that cannot otherwise be sterilized. Ultrasonic cleaning is used to achieve fine cleaning of instruments by the use of sound waves to create bubbles that disrupt small particles that may exist in hard to clean places on instruments. It may be used as an intermediate step between initial cleaning and high level disinfection. It does not sterilize. Cleaning medical devices before sterilization must be done to reduce the bio burden. Use of a biological indicator in an autoclave load is done to determine if the load has been properly sterilized, which is confirmed by a negative result. In the event of a positive test, the sterilizer should be tested again with paired biological indicators from two different manufacturers, and all of the unused items should be retrieved. Biological indicators should be used daily. Endoscopes. Endoscopes must be stored by hanging vertically to facilitate drying in a manner that protects the scope from contamination. Endoscopes must be cleaned in the following order. High level disinfection, then rinse with sterile water, flush with 70 to 90% alcohol, and dried with forced air. The enzymatic detergent used in cleaning endoscopes must be discarded after each use and cannot be reused to reduce turnaround time and decrease costs. Competencies must be performed annually. IUSS can be used if the instruments are cleaned and inspected before proceeding. Storage of sterile items must be 18 inches from the ceiling, 8 inches above the floor, 2 inches from an outside wall. The rack must have a solid bottom in a room that is positive pressure with a temperature no greater than 75 degrees Fahrenheit and humidity no greater than 70%. In the facility, a relative humidity of less than 60% is used to control fungal growth. The air exchanges in the decontamination room should be 6 per hour. 
Prior to opening a sterile pack, the end user is to check for moisture and package integrity, looking for tears, um, a change in the color of the package, the outside of the package, or any wrinkles. Sterile packs exposed to undesirable conditions, such as fruit flies, must not be reprocessed. Gravity displacement steam sterilization occurs by forcing steam into the chamber from the top and pushing the air in the chamber out the bottom of the chamber. Low level disinfection can occur for blood pressure cuffs. In the event of a outbreak associated with a scope, the incident must be reported to the FDA and the scope manufacturer. AMI Standard 79 states that mechanical cleaning equipment must be verified. Upon installation, after major repairs, preferably daily, and when changing chemistries. The disease with the most resistance to disinfection sterilization is Crutchfeld-Jacob disease, or CJD, followed by C. difficile, then polio, and then staph aureus. Surgical instruments used on a CJD patient require special processing. Patients with CJD can have the prion in their brain and eye tissue. If it's passed to another patient, it is called iatrogenic CJD. Asepsis and food safety. Aseptic technique is the process of keeping away disease producing organisms. Food should be stored at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. To improve food safety, refrigerators and freezers should be maintained and the temperatures recorded. These are some of the questions to test your knowledge of this module in the APIC IP Practice Certification Study Guide Edition 6. Thank you.